All right. Well, let's go ahead and get started. Today, we are going to do the second part of Keep Calm, Grade On, and we're going to be talking about grading, actually setting up different items in the content section, and then being able to link those items to your grade, cent grade center in D2L. So, for those of you that don't know, my name is Bruce Botts, I'm Instructional Design Specialist for CTAT. So, we're going to go ahead and get started. For the grading part of this, for the second uh, part of this session, we're going to be talking the uh, going over here for the objectives, explaining the purpose for syncing items to Grade Center, because you know we can, anybody can sync them. Some people do, some people don't. There is actually a reason for it, so we're going to talk about going and talk about that. Discuss how to effectively sync items to D2L's Grade Center. Um, there's multiple different ways to be able to go in and do this, but we're going to talk about the most effective way and why it's the most effective way. And then in comparing some of the advantages and challenges syncing items to the Great Center. So we're going to go over some of that. And there's actually more advantages to do it than there really are for challenges for it. So it's mainly all advantages for being able to actually do this. For the purpose, we're going to actually talk about um, the different parts of this. We're going to be discussions, Dropbox, and quizzes. Those are the three sections that we're going to actually talk about syncing up. And also with that, we're just going to talk about uh, the doing everything in one location when grading. There's a good purpose for having it because everything is in one location and you can do everything from that one spot. So you're not having to constantly go back and forth. So a lot of people sometimes they grade discussion boards. They go in, they look at the student stuff that's there, they put grades in it. They might put it on a piece of paper. Then they go to their grade center and they enter in the grades in the grade center. So they're bouncing back and forth from one more, more than one location. So doing it all this way actually puts everything in one place. So when you do it, you're only having to go to one place and not continually go back and forth. The students can see their grades and feedback immediately. So once you do it, you have a spot right there to put in your feedback once you have it set up and you're grading from there. So it makes it really easy for them because as soon as you're done and you click OK on it and it processes it and saves it, it's immediately available for the students at that point. So it's not put your grades down somewhere, go somewhere else, and do it there's time that's involved in that. So again, with it being in one location, it actually gives that immediate feedback. And it also has the ability to easily allow you to look up a grade or assignment in Grade Center. And I'll show you on that here when we get a little further in the presentation, more ways to help be able to look that up. But instead of having to go back through different locations, you can find it all easily because it's all centralized in one place in the Grade Center. And there's an easy way to be able to look in there to be able to say, hey, did somebody submit something or did they do, this, do the work? So first off was going to be coming in to actually be able to set up and be able to link this to your, grade, your content stuff to your Grade Center. As I said earlier, we're going to talk about discussions. We're going to talk about quizzes and Dropbox. A lot of people, if you already have a course and it's not synced up, you probably already have those items created somewhere. If you go into discussion board area, you may have discussions already in there. If you go into your um, quiz area, your quizzes are probably there, or same thing with Dropbox. One of the great things about this, if to do this effectively and efficiently and help the students out, is to come into the content area. If you come in here and you click New, you can come in here into the New Spot. You can create a new one if you do not have it. You can also add existing activities, which is the same thing. We can come in, you can be able to pick discussions, Dropbox, or quiz. So depending on which one you have, you're going to have the same option here to be able to select them. When you select them, it's going to actually take you in and allow you to be able to sync it up. So once you've created, clicked on one, this is just an example of when I'm inside for actually a discussion. So if I actually pick select, I either did a new discussion and created the new part under properties with a name, or I've selected one that's existing. I come into this. Once I get into the edit area here, where I have the properties, restrictions, and assessment, I'm going to go to the assessment tab for discussions. Now, I have two different things in here. You'll notice where I have the little bubble set up. One part of it here is under the discussion for this drop down. This is where I actually click the drop down and associate it with the discussion that was already currently set up in a grade center. So this would be for a course, for instance, that I already have everything set up and there's already a grade item in the grade center and I'm going to sync this too. The other part here is for new grade item where it says grade book not set up. If you do not have stuff in your grade book, then you can actually come in here and click new grade item and this will allow you to actually create an item in the grade book. So you can actually sync it right from here once you get in and start working on your, uh, like for a discussion or a quiz or for Dropbox, you can come in here and be able to sync it all up and set it up at that point. If you do go to the new item, these are the two windows you're going to get. 
it's, it's actually I should say two windows, but it's one window. It's a scroll down, but it, I had to take two screenshots to get it all on here. It's going to ask you for a name, which is what you're going to show in the Grade Center. It's going to ask you for category. I left this as none because I was doing a course setup where I'm just doing a point value across, so I wouldn't necessarily have different categories for everything. If you had categories and you created those in your Grade Center first, which we talked about last week, creating categories, creating items, if you had categories, you'd use the drop down here on the bottom of this left picture for category and select that category so you can put it with that. And then the next part of you scroll on down, you can give a description as well as be able to set up the number of points that are there so this, you can put in an amount for a grade on what you're going to be grading based off of. The next part is we're coming in here for uh, back in. Like I said, we just talked about discussions. So the next thing we would do is come in and actually set this up and let's say your Dropbox. Again, you want to come to your content section and you can set up either a new Dropbox or you can go under Add Existing and click Dropbox from there. So that way you have it to be able to link up. One great thing and one reason to do this is the students aren't having to hunt for stuff and be able to find it. So that's why we're, continu we're continually coming back and talking about the content section. When a student comes into a course, we don't want them to have to hunt and find stuff. When it's all right there in one location where they can just click on it, and they know what they have to do, they know what's coming up, what they have to do next, it actually doesn't, it keeps the student from stressing out, keeps them from emailing us, asking where stuff is as instructors. It keeps them from saying, oh, I didn't know I have to do that. And it keeps it there in a spot that they are, okay, I know where everything is, I can find it easily. So that means also they're going to be more apt to say, okay, I want to take more classes because everything here, which is and ultimately going to help us with our retention. So it's going to help them as far as their learning. It's also going to help us with retention as a whole. So that's what we want to be able to actually have. So that's why you'll see I'm back to the same page I showed earlier for the content sections. We want to be able to come in here, set it up this way, so that way it's in one location for them to be able to find it. So Dropbox, same type of thing. Except you'll notice at the top, we don't have, when we come in, we do not have the assessment part in there. Dropbox has properties, restrictions, and then obviously the turn it in if you guys use that. So for Dropbox, we put in just an assignment, a name in here for the folder. So I just called this essay. We'd say it would be an essay. Again, option for category. If we wanted to associate this with the category that we'd already created, like we talked about last week, or two weeks ago, sorry, for the Keep Calm grade on, the first part of this. And then a grade item. So again, if you have a grade item, all you got to do, click the drop down. You can already do that if you already have your grade book set up. If you don't have it set up, then you can come in here and be able to click new grade item and create a new one at that. And then obviously put in the score for how many points it's going to be. So when you grade, you'll be able to go in and be able to grade for it. If you click new grade item, again, same page as we had before. It's going to give you the same options to be able to set up a new grade item so you can put in what you want to call it and be able to set that up. Same type of thing when we come in and we start working with quizzes. We want to go back to the content section. We want to either do new quiz or click the drop down for add existing activities and then click what, a quiz that we already have in there. We want to keep this consistent. We want to keep this set up this way, like I said earlier. That way the students can go through the course. They can find everything. It alleviates emails on our side as faculty for them asking questions. And it also gets rid of that, oh, I didn't know I had to do that question that they always seem to ask. Oh, I didn't know that was part of the course. Or, I didn't know I was required to do that. They can find it. So hopefully this will be something that will help us out overall as an institution if we continue if we do this and kind of help go through and keep consistent with it. Plus, when the students have different courses, different instructors, they'll always know where to go this way instead of having to hunt and search for different things. So for the quizzes, when you come in, once you've gone in with that, you've added an existing quiz or you've created a new quiz, whichever you're going to do, once you have it pulled up for the quizzes, you're going to see the properties area. When you have the property side pulled up for the properties tab, that's where you'll put in the name of the quiz or whatever you're going to do for the quiz. You'll want to go to the assessments tab. There's a couple different features here on this. We have the allow attempt to be set as graded immediately upon completion that you'll notice I have checked here. And then, we, then what this does is allows it to be graded. So if you have like a multiple choice quiz, this will allow the uh, D2L to grade it for you automatically. The next part is where the grade item again. Drop down, select if you already have it created, or you can add a new one. And then we have an auto export to grades. The auto export will take the grade once it's actually been calculated out, and it'll put it over automatically in D2L, or in D2L gradebook, I should say. It'll move it over to the grade center for you. That way you don't have to actually worry about 
okay, is it moved over or is it not? This should do it automatically for you. So by coming in and syncing it to your grade book here, you can get it to grade it automatically for you. You can attach it to a grade item and then you can have it actually go over to the grade center and actually post, put the grade inside the grade center so you actually know what it is, you know, what the grade is right there in your grade center and you can see it. So this is really, once it's set up and working, it should pretty much be a hands-off on that part of it where you won't have to actually go in and manually grade stuff that's in there. It'll do it for you. Again, if you want a new grade item, you would set up the same thing as like we've done for the other um, couple, the discussions and the Dropbox. You can come in and be able to create a new grade item. When you come into Grade Center, it allows you to come in here. I just did this under a fake student account. But I was talking about everything's in one central location and you can easily be able to look back at it and be able to find out information. If you'll notice here under discussions, if you notice for those these little bubbles that are sitting there by the 100%, and then we also have over here under homework, we have the little icon here and the same thing under where I put this category in here for midterm. These items will show you right here very quickly if a student has done something. You can click on one of those items, it will open it up so you can be able to see it. So if you're in week 12, week 13, student says, hey, I don't understand why I have a zero for my discussions from week nine. You can come in here very quickly, look through your grade center, find their name, come across and say, okay, well, there's my discussions category. Here's the assignment for the item under it. Okay, there's a bubble. Okay, so they did the, a, something was done, so you can click on it and see what's the, what, you know, what it was and why you gave them a specific grade. If the bubble's not there, then you can just easily glance here and say, well, you didn't do a discussion board for that time. A lot of faculty I've talked to, so they go back and forth a lot of times. They get that. They have to go back in. They log into discussions. They go through the entire forum that's there for that thread to see if the student had posted. Or they, have, they try to you know, hunt down for specific student information from going into the grade part of it. This is a way to be able to get it quickly just by doing a glance instead of actually having to go through and hunt for everything that one student might have put in. As I said, same thing under homework. Click on it. It'll take you right up into where their assignment was. Same thing for midterm. You can click on it. You can take your, well, I have the midterm here, but for a quiz, it'll take you right into where the quiz is so you can view it quickly and be able to say, oh, okay, here's what was wrong. Here's what happened. So it makes it very nice in that aspect to be able to go in and be able to find things. So advantages and disadvantages. Like I said earlier, it's mostly advantages. It's one-step grading. You're not actually having to go from one location to another with the grades. When you, once you have it set up, you click on it, you can grade, the grade will go to the grade center right there, you can publish it to it, so you're not having to go back and forth or write them in on a piece of paper and then go back into your grade center and then enter them in at that time. Enter one time, again, it kind of falls back in the same thing with one-step grading. You're only having to enter it in one location, so you only have to enter a grade once. You don't have to go in and save it one place and then go and enter it somewhere else so you can get it in the grade center. Easily can pull up the grades. Like I showed you guys a second, like I showed a second ago on that last slide, you can come in, you can see what's there. It's all in Grade Center. It's all in one location, and then you can also see quickly in there and say, okay, did they turn something in? Did they not? So if a student does ask a question about something on a Grade Center item, you can easily go in and get it and pull it up. And then once it's set up, it'll copy semester to semester. So it'll copy over with the grade settings. It'll copy over with what you have in content, your quizzes. That all copies over. So once you have it set up, it's great to be able to go in and be able to do all that. The one disadvantage that some people would say would be time because they actually have to go in and configure it and set it up. If you already have stuff set up, then it would go a little bit faster. If you don't have anything set up in Grade Center, then obviously you're going to have to create grade items for each one of the assigned, anything that you have an assessed value on. So that was where it would, could be a disadvantage. You're going to spend a little bit more time for the first time that you set it up to get everything ready to go. And then once it is set up though, then like I said, it'll copy forward semester to semester. So the disadvantage turns into an advantage after that. So that's kind of going over the basics of what the uh, setting up stuff, syncing it to the grade center, trying to make it easier for students to navigate as well as making it easier for faculty so you can go to one location at a time and be able to grade. Anybody have any questions? Can you hear me? I can, yes. 
Okay. So, quick question. I was going to type a bit of it easier just to say it because I've ha I have had people ask me this question before. So, I just want to make sure we talk about it. If I have my grade book already set up, and all I do is I go to the discussion board and I set up my assignments there, and I go to Dropbox and I set up assignments there, and I don't put my assignments in the content area. Um, and I decide next semester I'd like to do what you've suggested. Is that easy to do? It is. It's really easy. In fact, I'll go back up just a couple slides here. If you come, um, if you have it already set up and everything's set up and graded, and you say, okay, I want to do this in the content area, which is where we really should be doing it. Instead, of, you can come in here. You can just do add existing activity, the drop down, and there's a link right there that will take you. It'll have discussion, Dropbox, quiz. Click on it. It'll sync it right up for you so you can set it up with what you already have created. Okay, thank you. All right, you're welcome. All right, any other questions? All right, thank you guys for Show, for participating and oh, Stephanie's talking something. Oh, okay, so thank you guys for participating and hopefully it'll be something that will help you guys out and the people implement in the course and make it a lot easier for our students as well as for everybody that's teaching the course. Thanks guys.